Hi there, welcome to NetB Invest. Today I thought I'd do a bit of an update to a company called West African Resources. And the reason I wanted to update to this company is because a lot has been happening in regards to where this company operates and the company itself. And I discuss all those news events in today's video. But the main reason I want to do a video on West African Resources today on February 22nd is because the company did release production guidance for financial year 22. Now their calendar year and financial year align. So when they release their quarter results uh, towards the end of January, we can see some of their financial year 21 numbers, including cash flow. And when you compare the cash flow, operational cash flow of this company to the market, there could be some value here. So $350 million of operational cash flow, yet the markup of this company is $1. $1.1 billion. In fact, after trading today, the market cap of this company might be heading more towards $1 billion, but we'll talk about that during this video. So let's get stuck into it. And before we have a look at the quarter report and all the news flow in regards to this company, just a few facts in regards to West African Resources. West African Resources is a gold producing company in West Africa. In fact, the country called Burkina Faso. Uh, hopefully I am pronouncing that right, small landlocked company, a country in West Africa. And typically, I won't say always, but typically uh, companies that do have their operations in these sort of company, countries will have a bit of a discount to it because there is a sovereign risk. And that sovereign risk was really highlighted about a month ago um, when there was a coup in Burkina Faso. And that's why share price of West African resources was affected towards the end of January. This company was founded in 2006, listed on the ASX 11th of June 2010. CEO founder is Richard High. Some interesting shareholders in their, their list here, Vanek 12.6%, but BlackRock 1.3, and the Norwegian bank, the Sovereign Bank, 1%. So some heavy hist hitters within the shareholder list of this company. And the market, $1.1 $1 billion, that's at $1.12. That was before trading had begun on February 26. Share price did fall, I think, to about $1.08. So there is potential that market gap could be more towards $1 billion than $1.1 billion. And the tick code for West African Resources is WAF. Now, we don't have their full financial numbers yet for financial year 21. So this is their financial data statistics for the last 12 months. So the trailing 12 months which is to the end of June 2021. The only thing we do know here is the operating cash flow instead of 198 million for the training 12 months, that's up to 350 million. So a significant rise in the operating cash flow. But if you look at all these numbers uh, in the training 12 months, $519 million of revenue, operating cash flow now 350 million, profit close to 170 million, gross profit 54%. They're not net debt anymore, they're actually net cash right now. They have paid off a significant amount of debt over the past uh, two years. And so this company is net cash. And I do like to see that for any companies. I like to see a company having net cash because if they have net cash, um, more than likely they will be able to survive in the future. The ma major reason why companies will go bankrupt or suffer um, in the future is because of too much debt on their uh, balance books. So, or balance books, balance sheet. Anyway, uh, EV operating cash flow at this point in time was 5.6 and the PE ratio 6.5, so not too stretch. In fact, the EV operating cash flow significantly lower than that based off the operating cash flow for financial year 21. So looking quite attractive when you look at the valuation metrics, but you still have to dig a little bit deeper. And I'll talk about why that's not quite as attractive as what it seems particularly when you look at their most recent production guidance that they did release on February 22nd. Now, just have a look at the most recent quarter report. Sometimes I do like to uh, look at two quarter reports, one year or separated by one year. But in this case, I'm just going to look at the most recent quarter report. And this was a really good quarter report. In fact, the best quarter report this company has experienced. Receipts and customers, $219 million don't spend a lot of money in production and in fact, they've got zero money spent in production, but I think that falls more into the payments to suppliers and employees, which was 77 million. But um, the main thing here is the company was operating cash flow positive 
by $138.6 million in the one quarter. Now, they began this quarter with $130 million of cash, and they spent $53 million on acquisition, $11 million on capital expenditure. They repaid $126 million of debt, but they did raise $136 million. The main reason they raised $136 million was because of, of an acquisition that's going to be potentially highly beneficial to this company in about three years' time. Now, because they paid repaid a lot of debt, debt fell to $13.8 million, but they also have $183.3 million of cash on hand. So their net debt is negative $170 million right now. So they've really changed their debt profile over the past two years. And it's been a focus of the management is to, to decrease their debt through their operational cash flow. And I do like that sort of strategy from management. Now, one of the things I do and like to see for any companies I do a little bit of research on is to see if receipts or revenue are growing through time. And for West African Resources, we have seven quarters of history from when they went into production or started production back in the June quarter of 2020. And receipts have grown from 86.4 million to new 219.4 million. Now, just because the receipts have grown during this seven quarter period doesn't mean it'll continue in the future. In fact, we know it won't continue in the future because the company has mentioned time and time again that they do expect production to fall away over the next few years. And unless we see a massive bull run in gold prices, uh, we will see receipts fall from here. Now, the other thing I've been provided in this graph is operating cash flow. And operating cash flow has also increased from 52.4 million to 138.6 million. The other thing to take note here is that over the past five or six quarters, gold prices have really done nothing. They've gone sideways. So this company really hasn't benefited from increasing gold prices. So this is all on the back of increasing production, that sort of thing. That's exactly what you want to see. But again, the company has highlighted that they do expect production to fall away. In fact, their production guidance for, for financial year 22 has backed that up. So I don't expect quarters like we've just experienced over the next financial year. The other very important thing for me is how the company is dealing with their debt. When they started production uh, back in June quarter 2020, they had $304 million of debt and $83 million of cash. So they were a net debt by over $200 million. And during the last seven quarters, as soon as they started to go into production management, had the idea, had the thought, which is a good thought, to decrease their debt, increase that cash. And that will help them when they get or try to take this new acquisition into production by financial year 25. So right now, they have $13.8 million of debt, $180 million of cash. They are net cash for the first time in this company's life. And that is a massive tick in my book. And this is the acquisition I've been talking about in this video. They made this on the 26th of October, 2021. And they're hoping that when they take this acquisition into production by 2025, they'll be producing $400,000 um, ounces of gold per year, which is almost double from their guidance for financial year 22. So it does look like uh, there is potential that this company will be growing in terms of production in three years time. So that is something to keep a very close eye on. And there is potential, particularly if we see gold, gold prices rise and they can produce more cash in operations, there's also the possibility they might be eyeing some more acquisitions in the future. Now, West African Resources has their operations in Burkina Faso and any of those sort of companies there is, is a bit of a sovereign risk. Seems like a lot of these companies in companies, countries in West Africa, or maybe I should say West Africa, are prone to being a coup affected. And they did release, so West African Resources did release an announcement on the 25th of January that their operations are safe, no staff has been affected, and operations at their gold mine uh, are continuing as usual. But that did not uh, matter to the shareholders because the share price did fall by a fair bit. And that does lead the opportunity to buy into this company at uh, cheaper valuations, cheaper prices, and there's a little bit more fear in the market. Now, the inspiration behind me doing this video on West African resources was the release of their production guidance 
for financial year 22, not only production guidance, but also all instating costs that they are expected uh, to pay for this financial year. Now, looking at their production guidance in isolation tells you nothing. You need a bit of a base, and the perfect base is financial year 21 numbers, and they provided this in the quarter report. So the annual 2021 guidance was achieved, so that's a good thing. Gold production finished at 288,000 uh, ounces at an average all-in staining cost uh, per ounce of 796 US dollars. Now to the important production guidance. We, I did expect uh, production to be down, and we did expect that the all-in staining cost to be a little bit higher than $796. But let's just see how lo lower the production is and how much higher the costs are for financial year 22. And to be honest, I had no specific targets when it came to production or their costs. And they are expecting uh, production to be between 220,000 and 240,000 ounces. So that is a fair bit lower than financial year 21. But the thing that really, I won't say got me interested, but the thing that really uh, stood out for me was the increasing cost from 796 US dollars per ounce to between 1,040 and 1,100. That is uh, a significant increase in cost, and that will affect the company's cash flow. The only thing that could help the company moving forward is an increase in gold prices, and we are seeing a potential breakout right now. So that could move the share price of this company higher from right now. Now onto the charts for West African resources. Going to look at two charts, the weekly chart in this slide and then the daily chart in the next slide. You can get different perspectives by looking at different time frames. And when I say time frames, I'm talking about weekly charts, daily charts, or even monthly charts. And when you look at the weekly chart, it does actually look really interesting for West African resources. The share price has been in a bull run since um, the COVID-19 financial panic when the share price of this company fell to about 38 cents. And it has increased to a current share price of $1.08. But the main thing here is there is an uptrend which is portrayed by this sloping orange line. And that uptrend has been reached twice in the past year, uh, back towards March 2021, and then again um, towards about uh, October 2021. And both times it reached that uptrend, the share price uh, pulled up again, or took off again. And right now, the share price is right on that support level at $1.07. And the amazing reason we have seen the share price fall back, probably not only today, but also yesterday, there was a few loose lips. We have seen share price pull back from the $1.20 range to a current share price of $1.07, and it's touching that support level. So if you are bullish about this company, if you are bullish about future gold prices, now could be a low risk entry point for you. Or even if you just want to play the trade right now, it's a very low risk uh, opportunity because West African Resources is right on that support level. You take a position at $1.07 or $0.08, and if the share price falls below and breaks that support level, that uh, uptrend, that would be an automatic sell. So a low-risk um, buy-in price right now with, with West African Resources. When you look at the daily chart, and this is the daily chart going back to February 2020, so this is a two-year period, a little bit more noise uh, in daily charts. I do like to look at both daily and weekly. Sometimes I even look at monthly chart. The reason I like to look at weekly charts is you eliminate the noise, the volatility you can see in the daily chart. You can just see that volatility when you look at West African Resources daily chart. But the uptrend is intact, and you can see that with that sloping orange line. We did see the share price fall briefly through that towards the end of September, start of October, and then share price went on a little bit of a bull run. In fact, share price increased from $0.88 cents to $1.44 in about a four-week trading period. And the share price did reach its high of about $1.46 back in November this year. But the share price has been under pressure and has fallen back towards that uptrend. And as I mentioned before, right now could be a good low-risk buy, potentially if you just want to play the trade at $1.07 or $0.08. I think the share price did close at $1.08, so a little bit of buying on closing option. And this is a potential um, play for me as trading begins on Wednesday, the 23rd of February. That's all I have for this update to West African Resources. 
If you look at some of their financial numbers in isolation, it does look dirt cheap. $350 million of operational cash flow on a market cap of $1.1 billion. But you do have to be aware uh, production will fall in financial year 22, and more than likely we'll see lower levels again in financial year 23 and 24 before that new mine that they did acquire goes into production in financial year 25. But if gold prices continue to show some strength, if the breakout in gold is confirmed, um, they might not have the same sort of cash flow, but uh, the increase in costs, the decrease in production won't be as severe as what they might experience otherwise. If you want any questions or you want to leave a question, you want to leave your thoughts, um, your opinion about this company, leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.